should judge a horse or punish a horse just because they don't like being a servant, you know? And that's what they really are, they're servants. Sometimes the servants are treated really well and sometimes they're just, you know, treat, treated badly or they're just treated as livestock and that's it. But um, some of us, uh, some of us and some horses are just to servitude and some of us and some horses don't. <laughs> that's how I look at it. The connection that horses have is so interesting because they really do read what's inside of you on an emotional level. So I've had um, situations where I was really feeling upset about something inside and I went to visit my horses and I was trying to put on a happy face because I'm seeing my horses and I don't want to be crabby or something and so I go down and there's Annie and she doesn't want anything to do with me. She doesn't want me to pet her. If I approach her to try to touch her on the neck, she turns away or she walks away. And so what she's telling me is, I see that you're upset and you're pretending not to be upset. This makes me feel really uncomfortable, so I'm just gonna leave. So in 2003, we started a nonprofit to preserve this gene pool, but then it kind of expanded into helping other Mustangs. As long as they were wild horses, they needed help. But we're still, we still have two goals here. We have the sanctuary, but we also have this little gene pool of Spanish horses. And uh, eventually, who knows what'll happen there because we have a group of inspectors coming in to look at them. They may you know, somebody else may help me take that over. But uh, we had the horses on a different place and then two years ago we moved on to this place. And this place is great because we can take people out, they can see what we're doing, we can explain the history of the horses, we can explain what's going on. There we got another group. Well, look at this. We've got two down over here. Cindy. I think if you come this way, the light's really nice on them. Oops, okay, one up. In 2007, I was still working for a horse magazine, and they had decided that they were folding. So I was forced into a career change. And I had already been photographing wild horses for four years. And the idea just popped in my head one day to do the workshops. I'd had a lot of people asking me about going out with me and that were interested. And what started off as something very scary, you know, losing a job I had had for six and a half years, turned it into an opportunity to finally do something that I really loved, you know, was passionate about. Okay, yep, yep. There we go. <laughs> 100. Oh, 150. Oh, 125. <laughs> Let's go get down with these babies. Let's go get down close to these babies. I always hope that my photographs can make a difference in the lives of these horses. And I mean, it creates an awareness. I 
try to portray them. I'm very much a portrait photographer, even though you think of lots of action with wild horses. Well, actually, 95% of their time is spent eating and grazing, so there's not a lot of action, despite what people think. Um, and I, I mean, I try to give people a glimpse into their their real spirit, um, their individual personalities. Um, so that they can really feel them as individuals and understand what's at loss um, as they take them away. Um, I never know how my photography is going to change. It's like one day some idea pops into my head and I'm off on a tangent for a while and um, or I'm out shooting and you know you have those nice little accidents where something pops up in an image and you decide to go with it and, and do it on purpose you know the next time and so you never know where it's gonna lead I mean that's the thing about being an artist of any kind I think it's the constant excitement of finding something new to say in a different way it's a simple little dream I used to have when I was young it was a recurring dream though and so, which is why I've never forgotten it, because I never remember dreams, you know, hardly. And um, in this dream, something bad was after me, as it often is when you're little and there's all these boogeymen, you know. So something bad was after me, and I was running, and I was running. I would get to this field, it would be a great big field, but there would be like high bushes or fences or whatever all around, and I'd be looking, I couldn't find an escape route, and all of a sudden this horse would appear. <laughs> This horse would appear and he'd come running by me and I'd grab him and I'd leap onto his back and he'd just jump over those barriers and carry me away to safety and freedom. So that was my childhood dream. But it was for real. I used to have it all the time. And they still do that. These, the horses still do that for me. So. Hey, thank you so much, Governor Richardson. Um, you have no idea how lucky the state is to have you. I mean, to show such leadership at a time when 100 years ago we had 2 million Mustangs roaming on the range, and we're down to apparently 30,000, and most of us know it's probably 15 to 20,000. And here we are in America with these incredible Mustangs that people around the world envy. So thank you all for being here. My website is Saving America's Mustangs. I've also just recently purchased land in Nevada, and we have 18,000 acres with 600,000 uh, public lands attached to it, 600,000 acres. So we'll be doing the same thing, creating an eco-sanctuary. Let's help each other. You know, it's going to take many of these around the country, but because of Governor Richardson, you've shown the leadership, and I'm sure there'll be other states that say, you know, we need to do this too. So thank you so much. I would urge anybody who has a chance to interact with horses to find a way to do that because they're such amazing beings and just to see them together in a pasture, I think, would move people to a place of understanding something different about themselves inside. And that if, if people would just allow them to speak to them in whatever way they, they can take in, that, that you would be changed inside, that it would be an experience that that would make you feel different inside. Thank you.